Welcome back to Process Dynamics and Control. Today we're going to be talking about non or first order approximations to dynamic models. So we're going to do some dynamic process modeling and uh, just take you through some of the theory and also application of being able to fit some of these models to data. So when we want to learn about the dynamic behavior of a process, we have to analyze uh, the data that comes from that system. And uh, one way to generate that data is to make a step change, suddenly change the input to the system or what we call the controller output. So the controller output is going to become the input to the system. We need to make sure that we move the controller output far enough um, and fast enough so that we can see this dynamic behavior. Uh, one of the other things that we're going to be taking a look at is understanding the nonlinear behavior of these processes. Okay, so we're going to be using uh, for an introduction to this. Uh, this is a very simple model. It's a first order plus dead time dynamic process model. And there's the time domain form of that equation. Now this is the y variable. We also sometimes call that the PV. Um, in the model predictive control area, we call that the controlled variable or the CV. Um, the U is also the input. Um, we sometimes call it the controller output. Um, or also in model predictive control, we call it the manipulated variable. Okay, so um, the first order plus dead time model is a low order representation. It's a first order representation. And it's also linear. So um, you know, it's a linear approximation. So it isn't going to work well for very nonlinear systems. Um, it will work well for nonlinear systems to approximate the behavior in a particular area. Okay, so this is the form of the model, and there are really three constants to pay attention to. You have k sub p, tau sub p, and theta sub p. So you have the steady state gain, the overall process time constant, and then also the apparent dead time. So what, what are we doing with these um, for the purposes of designing a controller? Uh, we want to have these three parameters okay, from our process model so that eventually we can tune correlations. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. This is the IMC tuning. Uh, so you can see that uh, you know, K sub P, tau sub P, theta sub P, uh, those come into the correlations for good starting points uh, for uh, the controllers. Okay, so that's, um, you know, these are tuning guides. Uh, one of the tuning guides that I like to use, uh, you know, we're not getting into this uh, very much right now, but just k sub c uh, is one over k p, and tau p or uh, tau i for the controller equals tau p, and then tau d equals zero. This is a p i controller, and uh, often this does very well in many circumstances, just to give you a rough starting point for a p i d controller. You can use, uh, for example, IMC. Um, there's also ITAE um, correlations that are very popular. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is also, you know, we need, so we need to obtain these k sub p, tau sub p, theta sub p, so that we can get these controller tuning values. And one thing to note, um, if you have a k sub p that's positive, you have a, what's called a reverse acting controller. And if the case of P is going to be negative, it's direct acting. So most controller implementations, you always implement um, a positive um, K sub C, and then you change it to either be direct or reverse acting based on the sign of K sub P. Okay, so that's just one thing to keep in mind for later when designing the controllers. And also the um, tau sub P, um, one of the things to keep in mind is that the sampling frequency uh, is going to be important. So we have to have tau sub p, we need the sampling time, um, we need at least 10 samples in every time constant of time. So if you have a, a time constant of 2 seconds, you need to have a sampling frequency of at least about 0.2. Okay, so it needs to be faster than that or equal to it. Okay, so um, you know, when we have a step test, what we're doing is this is the controller output or the input to your system. Okay, so that's the input. And uh, then we have our system. 
and then we have an output okay so this is our output and this is a common this is going to be a case of p going to be po is going to be positive because we had a positive change in the input and then we had a positive change in the output as well okay and we're going to go into how to fit um, these k sub p tau p and theta p okay so first of all k sub p um, k sub p is just going to be this delta steady state change it's delta output uh, divided by delta input okay and uh, let's just go on to the next slide so for this uh, this is a gravity drain tank uh, system we look at a very starting point and the very ending point starting point and ending point and then you just take the difference okay and then it's just going to be a ratio of the differences now one thing to keep in mind is there are going to be units here okay so units are very important for the game um, the units for tau sub p and theta sub p those are also going to have units and those are going to have units of time okay so um, overall time constant from the step test data how do you determine tau sub p okay now this is uh, when the process variable or this output reaches 63.2 percent of its total change from when the start of the response happens not when the start of the change happened in the manipulated variable okay so let me explain that just a little bit more okay so um, the start of the response in this case is about right here okay now the start of the change is uh, right here okay so a little bit before it so 9.6 sec uh, minutes um, that's when the start of the change happened um, and the start of the manipulated variable movement happened at about 9.2 minutes okay so um, what we do is we locate um, where the measured variable uh, reaches 63.2 percent of the final total change I'm going to show why it's 63.2 percent um, here um, so what we do is this is the total change um, you know delta y and then this is going to be uh, delta y times 0 0.632 that's 63.2 uh, percent of the total change okay um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and switch over to um, just the to, to derive this Okay, so why is the delta equal to that? I'm just going to first of all go ahead and write out this um, differential equation. You can use x or y here. I guess I used y in the presentation, so let me use that in this one as well. I'm just going to do it for uh, this case where we have just y and u, no time delay. Okay, so after the time delay, it's, it's going to be the 63.2% to the new steady state value. What I'm going to do is now go ahead and just uh, transform this into the Laplace domain. Okay, so I have um, this is now in the Laplace domain, assuming that uh, that y of zero equals zero. Initial condition equals zero for y. Okay, so the derivative of uh, the, the Laplace of the derivative. If you recall, the Laplace of the derivative value equals s times y of s minus y uh, initial condition, but this went to zero, so I was just left with this term. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, just go ahead and collect this onto the left-hand side and factor out a y sub s. Okay, and uh, y s and equals k sub p u of s okay and now I have y of s divided by u of s equals k sub p over tau p s plus one okay and um, so this is uh, what's called a transfer function so if I have u of s coming in then I have k p tau p s plus one is my system and then y of s is going to be coming out of that system okay so I have um, a transfer function but let's just say I have a step 
uh, I'm, if just for uh, the simple case, I'm going to say that I have a step of 1, which is going to be 1 over s in the Laplace domain. And I'm just going to multiply that over here. Okay, so y of s equals kp tau p s plus 1, and then times 1 over s. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the inverse Laplace of both sides of this to get back into the time domain. Okay, so y of t is going to equal um, k sub p, and then it's going to be 1 minus e to the negative t over tau sub p. Okay, so um, here's the time response of that system with initial condition equals 0. And uh, one of the things that I notice is when I reach time equals tau sub p, then I have this is equal to kp 1 minus e to the negative 1. Okay, because t equals tau sub p, those two cancel, it becomes 1, and that equals kp times 0 0.632. Okay, so this is 0 0.632, and that's where the 63.2% comes from. Okay, so uh, just moving on here, um, so, and, and this shows the, the derivation again, um, just to see it one more time. Um, so, we need to find where the response started. And one of the things that we can do is just draw a tangent line here. And then find the point at which that intersects um, the steady state value. And so that's a, a, always a good way to do the approximation. Uh, one question is, where do we draw the point for the tangent? If we draw it here, the tan you know the line might be this way. If we draw it here, the line is going to be, you know, up here. Okay, so where where do you draw the tangent? You want to draw it, um, you know, in the first part of the curve. Um, and one of the reasons for that is if you drew it and you had a starting point like right here, your first order plus dead time system is going to maybe try to match like that. It's going to be off especially in this first part. So if you're going to use this tangent approach, you want to make sure that you do it maybe in the first, uh, you know, draw your tangent point in the first 20 to 30 percent of the response. Um, you'll come back here and then your first order plus dead time system will match uh, better. Okay, so it's, it's always just an approximation. We're going to be showing a graphic. This is a graphical method for determining these. Okay, so there we have um, you know the the time 11.2 minutes and then we need to make sure that we don't include the dead time okay in this total tau sub p so this is going to be tau sub p and then this is going to be theta sub p okay so do not include theta p inside the tau sub p okay so right now from this plot uh, we had a tau sub p of 1.6 uh, minutes. Okay, then theta p, um, as I mentioned before, it's the apparent dead time. Um, and uh, you know, one of the things to note is that tight control is you know, t increasingly difficult if your theta sub p starts approaching the value of tau sub p. Okay, so if the apparent dead time is almost as great as the time constant of the system, um, PID controllers are going to be difficult to tune. Okay, and in this case, um, you know, we can use a tangent approach again um, and uh, find out where the dead time was. Um, you know, you want to start from where the step occurred, okay, and then go until the, uh, the apparent dead time ended, and then you see the response in the system. Okay, so in this case, uh, theta sub p is 0.4 minutes. Okay, so. Um, you know, these values of k sub p, tau sub p, and theta p, they may change over time. Um, one of the interesting things is that you might have, you know, fouling or corrosion, some mechanical engineer uh, elements might change, you know, wearing, uh, you know, feedstock might change, uh, you know, environmental conditions, temperatures, other things outside, uh, humidity. Those things might change, and some of your tuning constants may change. And uh, so, so that means that you may have to go back in and retune the controller 
because the fundamental response of the system has changed. So one of the other things to, to watch is when you're doing these step tests and you step in different operating regions, you may have different responses. Okay, so in this case, you had a response of, of delta equals 20. In this case, you had delta equals 10. Now, you had the same delta here of 10 and 10. So a difference um, of k sub p is going to be 2, or 1 in this case, and then 2 in this next case. Okay, so k sub p equals 2, k sub p equals 1. And so what this indicates is that um, we have a nonlinear system. So that the system changes uh, the values of k sub p, tau sub p, and theta sub p when you get into different operating regions. And so the important thing is you can still control nonlinear systems, but you might get the best control if you do your step or doublet test in the region at which you expect to control your process. Okay, so um, that's just one thing to keep in mind. You can also do fancy things like gain scheduling. Um, to gain schedule your controller if you know you're moving into one region or the other. Okay, so um, this is the example of you know, what a, a linear model would look like. The deltas are going to be all the same in, uh, in each of these regions because you have the same input. But this might be what your actual process looked like. And so you can see the deviation between the nonlinear and the linear system there. Okay, so just to review the procedure for finding these first order plus dead time models, you first of all want to find k sub p. Okay, just take a look at your delta y over delta u. I, I suggest the next step is probably to do the theta sub p. Look for that apparent dead time. Um, then the final three steps are really to just find the tau sub p. Uh, you know, locate where your value needs to reach to get 63.2% of the way there. Find the time that it reached that and then uh, find the tau sub p, which is going to be where the dead time stops and where it reaches this final time for the 63.2%. So let's just practice this with the gravity drain tanks. Um, for this system, we had a, a gain of 0.137. So that is the delta y over delta u. Okay, next we're going to find the theta sub p. Okay, do our tangent method, and uh, we're going to locate it right here between these two. Okay, now we want to find um, also this. Uh, this is going to be the uh, delta y, and uh, we have delta y, and find our tau sub p as well. Okay, so now we've found our tau sub p. And one thing to just remember, account for dead time when calculating tau sub p.